Changing spark plugs. It's one of those jobs that we as technicians do almost every single day. I must have changed thousands over the course of my 35 years in the Bay. And I just learned recently that I've been making a lot of mistakes on a very simple process. So stick around and I'll show you what those mistakes were and how you can avoid them in this edition of The Trainer. Changing spark plugs is not a difficult task, but there are a few things you need to keep in mind as you're removing and reinstalling the plugs. It's not just a matter of simply screwing one out and screwing one in. Follow along and I'll show you what I mean. Okay, first step in removing the plugs is to remove the plug boot. If you can just reach in and give it a little twist and remove it without pulling on the wire, that's all fine and dandy. That works just fine. Get that out of the way. There are tools, though, like uh, these, that help make that a little easier. Uh, so you get that in a shot, just like those. And uh, of course, these are another form of the same type of tool designed to grab a hold of that plug boot. On coil and plug, sometimes a little twist to uh, help loosen that boot up, and then take the uh, take the boot off. Next, take a little shop air, get in there and blow any, any debris, any, any deposits away from the base of the plug so they don't get into the engine as we remove the plug. Then uh, I like to use a, a specifically a spark plug socket and a, and a hand ratchet. Never, ever, ever use a, um, well, there goes my fuel line, grab that. Never, ever use a, a, a power tool to take the plugs loose. So we'll get that on there. Break it loose. Got it fairly loose in the threads. I'm gonna try my fuel line on there, see if I can speed up the process a little bit. We'll put that on nice and firm. And there we go. And then we can take a look at it. See if there's any information that it might be able to tell us. This one uh, looks like it's burning pretty good. No excess deposits, uh, no carbon buildup. That's a plus. You say a picture's worth a thousand words, but often what you see in the uh, plug can tell you a lot about what's happening inside the engine. Uh, for example, if there's a lot of deposits on the plug, then there's something extra getting into the combustion chamber that's not supposed to be there. That could be oil, coolant, excess fuel. Uh, and usually you'll see the same discoloration on the, on the both the porcelain and on the ground electrode. Um, it's actually a science to read spark plugs and you can check any of the company websites that helped us with uh, today's video uh, for more information on exactly how to read a spark plug. Uh, one common mistake that a lot of techs make is uh, when they remove a spark plug and they see a stain. Let's make it up very close where you can see it. This particular one doesn't have it, but I'm sure you've seen it, uh, a kind of a brownish red stain right along the base of the porcelain where it enters the sleeve. And uh, a lot of techs think that that's an indication the plug's bad or it's got blow-by or something of that nature. It's not, it's actually called a corona stain and it's perfectly normal. It's, it's where the boot stops on the spark plug so there's a small space there before the shell. And when that plug fires, there's a lot of static electricity that tends to attract all that little oily dirt and debris that's floating around in the air around that plug. And that sticks it to the porcelain. That's what you're seeing in that corona stain, so that's okay. However, you wanna make sure you take a look for any signs of cracks, um, either along the porcelain. Uh, I'm sure we've all seen where the center electrode, the shell, the shell is just loose and jiggling around in there, or even some of this being left behind, all indicating uh, problems with the installation of the spark plug when it was uh, last put in. 
Uh, we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a moment. Now, when you get the replacement sprock plugs, you want to make sure that they look the same. They have the same thread reach, same thread pitch. Um, they all kind of look the same as the ones that you're replacing. You may notice a little difference in the electrode, the, especially the center electrode, depending on what material the plug is made with. Uh, of course, many of the plugs today now use precious metals. That just means that the very tip of that center electrode is coated with platinum, iridium, or, or, or something else. You have to be very careful with those. Always a good idea to check the gap on the plug versus the spec for the specific model that you're working on. Yeah, they're supposed to be pre-gapped in the box. Most makes will, will tell you that. But that doesn't mean something didn't happen to it while it was in shipment. It could have got dropped on the floor. Maybe somebody else had it and returned it. You never know. So take the time to check it. It's a big deal. Uh, excessive gap causes a higher demand on the, on the coil, the ignition system, and too small a gap could interfere with proper uh, uh, lighting off of that air fuel mix in the cylinder. So you want to make sure it's correct. Don't use one of those little thumb wheel ramp jobs that your tool guy or uh, give away, you know, and you got it laying in your toolbox somewhere. No, you want to make sure that you use you know, something like this, a good round wire feeler gauge. And if you do have to make an adjustment, you just use the, the part of the tool, the end of the tool, so I can show you that, to either bend that center electrode, that ground electrode rather, in relation to the center electrode until you have the right gap. And you're just going to check it gently with that round wire gauge. Uh, another type of gauge that's uh, available um, are feelers, just a feeler gauge. Let's see if I can get those out here for you, let you see those. Again, these are in a variety of sizes. So I can spread them out where you can see them. There you go. Um, and again, there's the tool for adjusting the ground electrode to adjust that gap. Again, stay away from the wheels. Make sure you use either a gauge or the round wire gauge to check the gap. That helps avoid damage to that precious metal on the end of that center electrode. Now, if you do happen to break that off, plug's no good. You gotta throw it away and get another one start all over again. All right, next topic on the agenda is making sure that when you're ready to put the plug back in, that you make sure the threads are clean. Both, if you're reusing the old plugs, make sure that those threads are good and clean. Uh, maybe take a die, just do a real quick rundown through them to make sure they're nice and clean, as well as the threads in the cylinder head. Make sure those are clean. If you are gonna run a tap through those couple of pointers, first put a light coat of grease on that to catch any dirt, metal chips that you're going to be disturbing as you run that tap through. And make sure that the piston, the valves are out of the way. You don't want to inadvertently damage the inside of the engine because you're trying to do the right thing in installing the spark plugs. Now, one word on the use of anti-seize or never seize on the threads. It used to be common, especially when the aluminum heads on these engines first came out way back when, uh, that we'd like to put a little dab of anti-seize on there to help to keep the, the plug from seizing in the head and making life more difficult when it was time to remove it later. Today's plugs, for the most part, are made with a different material in the shell that resists corrosion. So using anti-seize uh, anti or never seize is not necessary and not recommended by the makers of the plugs. Um, however, there are a few, and you'll find them if you look hard enough, uh, OEMs that do recommend the use of never seize on their spark plugs and, and, their, and their cylinder heads. Uh, and if you are going to use that particular uh, model, if you are working on that model and that's what it says, make sure you put just a very small dab just on one section of the threads. It'll coat the rest. You don't need to overdo it. Uh, there have been cases where too much anti seize has actually caused the plug to not be able to, to ground properly, it results in misfires. Uh, also, it can't pass the heat like it's supposed to. That results in damage to the plug and premature failure and could lead to engine problems due to pre-ignition and detonation. So, word to the wise, if it doesn't specifically tell you to use anti-seize in the OEM service information, that we're all looking that up, right? Uh, then don't, just stay away from it. You'll find that most of the time it's not necessary. Now, on to putting the plug in. What's that you say? It's a torque wrench. Aren't you using a torque wrench to put your spark plugs in? Or are you using a 3 8 air ratchet to get them done? That's probably one of the most common mistakes that techs make, is not torquing spark plugs back into the heads properly, and it's a big deal. If it's not torqued tight enough, the plug can shake and vibrate loose, and it's also not connected good enough to the cylinder head to get rid of heat. So the plug overheats, 
It can cause fractures in the porcelain. It could cause, like I said earlier, pre-ignition and detonation damage, a lot of bad things. Over-tightening is just as bad. You can rip the threads out of the head if you're not careful, but a lot of times, a lot of guys don't realize, see if I can show it to you, that there's almost a breakaway right here between where the nut portion of the shell and the actual shell body meet. So if it gets over torque, you can actually break that shell right there. That means that the plug's gonna come out, but the threaded shell portion is gonna stay behind. Other things that can happen is cracking the porcelain or damaging the porcelain internally so that right when you're done, the car is leaving with a problem. Yeah, I know it's an extra pain in the butt, but it's something you should be doing on every car you do. Torque the spark plugs when you put them back into the car. Okay, now that we have that say, let's go ahead and uh, get our plug. I like to start with a little piece of fuel line. That, uh, that helps the plug get lined itself naturally with the threads and I'm not going to have any issues with cross threading if I was trying to use a tool to do it and certainly if I was trying to use an air tool again. This is not a job for power tools uh, going, uh, taking them out or putting them back in. So let's go ahead and we'll get this started in the threads. Now, once I get it started, I can switch over to the, to the ratchet. And we're just going to run it in hand tight. This is a tapered seat plug. Of course, you know that a plug can either have a, a tapered seat. And we'll see if I have that quite in there, right? Try that again. There we go. I think that's, no, being a little stubborn. That's all right. You know, it's like we said in the days when I was in the shop full time, sometimes it's just a matter of you got to hold your mouth right to, uh, to get something started. All right, so I think we got her in there now. And like I said before, I'm just gonna run it in hand tight. Finally. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it can take a few extra turns, can it? Okay, well we got it in. And now we got the torque wrench set up to go ahead and tighten it the rest of the way. Get that click. And that's in. Set that up out of the way. Now the last thing I like to do, usually th this comes with new wires. Uh, I would keep some in my toolbox, a little bigger quantity than this. This is dielectric compound. It's an insulating grease. And I like to put a little dab on the plug boot before I reinstall the plug, or plug wire rather, for two reasons. Uh, one, this helps with the installation of the plug. Uh, makes it a little easier getting the plug boot back onto the plug, rather. And it also helps seal around the plug to keep uh, moisture and other debris out. And it makes it easier to remove um, the next time I have to do this job. So we'll make sure that's on there. Nice little click. And uh, seven more to go and I'm done. Well, like I said at the beginning, there's a little more to changing a spark plug than just simply pulling it out and putting a new one back in. I think I've shown you, you know, that's the case. Uh, some very common mistakes that I know I've been guilty of, and I'm sure many of you are too. Number one is checking the gap on the plugs before we install them in. You know, we're all told that, yeah, they're already pre-gapped in the box. Shouldn't be a problem. And nine times out of ten, it's not. But it only takes a second to check it. Don't use the little ramp spark plug checking tool that your tool man gave you on the giveaway or that you picked up at some flea market somewhere. 
Use a round wire gauge like the ones I showed you, or the spark plug feeler gauges also like the ones that I showed you, and then carefully make any adjustments you need. If you're dealing with a precious metal plug and you do happen to damage or break off that tip, junk the plug, don't use it, get another one, and start that process again. As far as this uh, removal, a couple of tips you want to keep in mind. Remove the plug by grabbing the plug, uh, plug wire by grabbing the boot. Uh, use a special tool if you have to. Usually a quarter twist, twist either way will help break that free. And then you can remove it if it's a coil on plug. Again, a little slight twisting motion will help break that free. Uh, never, never, never pull by the wire. You're gonna end up leaving uh, the boot behind and have a broken wire in your hand. Once you have the uh, boot off, take some compressed air and blow off around it. Uh, make sure there's no debris that's gonna get in the engine, especially if you're dealing with a plug that's in a well, like many of the four cylinders and some other engine designs that they have. Uh, don't want any debris getting into the engine that we don't, uh, isn't supposed to be there. Uh, today's engines are very, very tight, uh, very small tolerances, and don't tolerate um, areas like the old engines used to. So, you know, make sure that you don't add to a potential problem by, by not clearing that, that well out before you pull the plug. Once you have the plug removed, compare it to the new one, make sure they look about the same. The center electrode may look a little bit different depending on what the tip's made of, of course, but the thread reach, the thread pitch, all of that should be the same as the plug that you just removed, and, uh, and you wanna make sure that's correct before you start installing the new plug. Um, sometimes uh, engine designs may have a call for two different plugs depending on nuances in that engine design, and you may end up with one that's too long a reach, too short a reach, either one's gonna cause you problems. So check that. Um, Make sure the plug threads are clean. If you're reusing the old plugs, make sure the spark plug threads are clean. Of course, make sure the cylinder head threads are clean. If you do run a tap through the head, um, put some grease on the threads to catch any debris or small metal shavings that you're going to create as you do that. And make sure that you don't have the piston valves in a position where that tap is gonna hit them. Don't take it too far into the combustion chamber. Uh, once you know the threads are clean, uh, then comes the question of lubrication. Unless the service information specifically tells you to add the lubricant to the threads, don't. Uh, most of the plugs today are made with a different material on the shell that resists corrosion, so the use of anti-seize like we did way, way, way back when is not needed for the most part. Uh, there are very few exceptions. You will find them from time to time. If it does tell you to use a little bit of anti-seize, that's the magic word, a little dip. Just like the old commercial said, a little dab will do you. Little is a whole lot better than a lot. So. If you do use anti-seize, just a, just a small amount. If not, if you use too much, you could result in a situation where the plug's ground is gonna be uh, inter intermittent. That can result in misfire. It can also result in problems with the plug overheating because it's not being able to dissipate that heat to the cylinder head like it's supposed to. Which leads me to the last summation of the day, and that's torquing the spark plugs in place. Yeah, I know, it takes a little extra t time to torque the plug down, but it a, makes a big, big difference. If it's uh, too loose, the plug's gonna vibrate, it's going to cause porcelain damage, it's gonna cause internal plug damage, it could cause parts of the plug to break off and drop into the cylinder. Uh, it's gonna interfere with the plug's ability to dissipate heat. That's gonna cause the plug to overheat. That could lead to pre-ignition or detonation damage in the engine. None of that's any good. Uh, the other extreme, same way, too tight is not good. You can damage the threads in the head, you can damage the plug. Uh, even to the point of uh, having uh, the plug shell and the porcelain separate uh, to where that upper part of the plug, the internal guts, if you will, are gonna fall out of the head while the shell remains behind. Uh, that's not a good thing, especially if your customer's cruising down the highway at 70 miles an hour. Uh, so do it right, take a torque wrench. If you absolutely, positively don't have a torque wrench, well, all right, well then there, you can still torque by, uh, by angle. What I mean by that uh, example, uh, most tapered plugs, when you install them, you install them hand tight, and then a sixteenth, that's it, a sixteenth of a turn more, but still, that's not accurate. Come on, you're a professional technician, you got a torque wrench in your box, it only takes a few seconds to, to add that to your spark plug uh, service procedure. Uh, well, that's gonna do it for this edition of The Trainer. I hope you learned a little bit, I know I did. I'll see you next month.